Welcome to this edition of Open SCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to play around with the offset command, polygons, and resizing. So, um, this is sort of kind of a neat thing because uh, since the la since a couple episodes ago, what I've been doing is playing around uh, down here with polygons quite a bit. Because the way I've been achieving this is, is if you recall this um, Open SCAD Contour Extractor program, I've been playing a lot with it. And so I have this rocket figure loaded in, and I've done get contours, and then what I've done is taken this the contours, which is this polygon set here, and added it in. Now, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been having a lot of fun with this, and, and I've been making up different uh, polygons and, and uh, saving them into a library. So I've got a rocket, a turkey, a Santa head, a gear, and a bunch more actually that I've been saving off to utilize as, as a library. However, one of the things I do is want to come back in here and show how I've been utilizing these polygons because a very important command that I've discovered and I want to share is the offset command. So if we take a little bit of a deeper look at the offset command in the uh, documents, here we have it. And what it does is allows us to take a 2D shape, and that's what a polygon is, and, and either um, inflate it or deflate it. Now the words inflation and deflation are very important because if we inflate it, we see the blue lines here, and by setting it, we can get different attributes of how the vectors are inflated. And probably one of the most important ones are delta equals x, where we're matching the polygon vector for vector. Because now if we just were to do a regular resize of it, what's going to happen is those vectors are going to be stretched and it's going to lose proportion. So with inflation and deflation, we're maintaining that proportion. And in the clock example, what we'll do is we'll actually utilize the deflation of the uh, polygon. Now notice that in the inflation, see how the point is here versus round versus it nubbed off? It's, it's reversed here, so instead of the external uh, vertices being modified, the internal vertices are being modified here. So this is one of the important things to keep in mind with inflation versus deflation. And most of the time we're going to be utilizing um, a delta equals x or just simply a delta uh, in the fact that uh, we're going to do a rote inflation deflation. So anyways, this is really a powerful command um, because it gets around the, the stretching attributes of a resize. So hopping back in this. Now one of the things that this is a little bit interesting, so I'm going to uh, go into uh, pop a ampersand here. Now notice the interesting thing is when I show the size of this it looks like the rocket in the last one but this other rocket doesn't look like that so what's the mystical magic happening there? Well basically what I'm doing is I'm doing a resize so what I'm doing is I'm constructing the base module so if we look at the base module which is this section down here what's happening is I do my, di I do my union and difference which is really uh, no true union here, it's just a placeholder, but I'm literally extruding my polygon object and then what I'm doing is I'm then differencing it out and then utilizing the offset to create that difference. And then now I'm utilizing resize to make it the size of the object I need for the clock. So this is why the difference here, so I'm creating, I'm creating the base module first and then resizing it to create the end clock module. Now this is, I don't know for me, I found this very interesting to be able to do it in this, this mannerism and I plan on keeping this as a template for, for different things because the, the one challenge you got is the, the polygon structure is the polygon. So you, you can, you can ex inflate or deflate it but resizing it um, before and after has negative effects on it. So utilizing it in this workflow, and, and you know, in other words, you do your creation of differences 
from the polygon at its original size and then the end product you do the resizing so hopefully that makes sense to everybody because I actually tried to do a little bit ass backwards and it didn't work and this is how I came up with this and this is one of the reasons I want to share this now the other thing that I'm doing too is I'm placing this polygon in a module so I can call this polygon up as as an object anytime I want now sort of the neat thing is is if I go over here and let's say instead I want to take the turkey I want a turkey instead of a rocket so I simply copy this polygon uh, code out and then I go and I go here and I replace it and then I just click build to rebuild it and and watch what happens so I now have a turkey clock and with, with just by changing that uh, little bit of the polygon code. So this becomes a very flexible tool. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is the hole here. So the pieces that I've come up with is, depending upon the polygon object, you need to move the hole for your clock over. So the pieces is I've added a clock spline offset that moves this around. Um, so we can because it is centered on true so see how we can move the the uh, the hole in an XY coordinate so you can simply just move it around so there we go we could fit a motor cleanly in there and then just simply spin this around and this would be the front of our clock and then this would be the back side of our clock that hides our motor uh, I've also set spline size so for the different clock motors I can I can change that also uh, you notice down here I've got the resize command and so what I'm doing is, is I made this sort of semi-parametric up here is map size of object so I can create uh, my X, Y, and Z ratios of the object up here and I can just simply control, um, control it from up there. So this has been a lot of fun uh, to do so one of the things that I am going to do is uh, well, let's, let's hop back instead of the turkey uh, because with Thanksgiving coming up, that'd be a perfect one, but everybody loves rockets. So um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rocket code and just go back into OpenSCAD and put this back. And just so I can have a rocket there instead. So and it's a lot less code. Uh, so anyways, uh, you notice the hole is still off-centered, so I've got to go back up here. And I've got to tell this is zero. And then boom, my hole is back in the right spot. So anyways, um, I think this has been very cool. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and one of the things I like doing about these videos is let's make it real. So let's cut over to a time lapse of us actually printing this out. And then let's hit the bench and take a look at what the final product looks like. And hey, see how our clock program works. So again, we've gone from an image on the internet, I got this rocket, to an actual physical product being a clock. So um, let's head over there, take a look. Welcome back. So we took a time lapse. We even put in some um, uh, thermal imaging of the print taking place, which I really thought was interesting because when you get to the kind of the end, you start to see the heat distribution of it. So uh, here's the finished product. So uh, it actually came out pretty good. Um, it had a little bit of fill-in issues uh, on the front, which is a little bit disappointing. But the general concept really worked out nice. So you can kind of see the back here. Um, the nice part about it is it stands up on its own like that, and you can't see it too well like that, but um, you can also get a clock motor where you can hang it on the wall. So um, you put a you know a hanger on the wall, and it'll hang from the wall sort of like that. Uh, so really a cool design. I've been having a lot of fun with this whole polygon uh, thing and being able to take various shapes from the Internet that I find and, and turning them into real objects. So uh, I've done a couple other ones you'll probably see in the near future on the uh, DIY channel. So out on Thingiverse, I've done a case, a bat-shaped case. 
Uh, also for Thanksgiving, I've done a turkey box. And so you'll see a lot more of this coming. And I'll actually put more of this coat out on this channel also. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea. So I've had a lot of fun with the polygons, with the offset command. So hopefully you learned something new. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe to the channel. A lot more coming. Um, again, hit me up below. And also, don't forget to check out our parent channel, DIY3DTech.com. Uh, a lot more stuff. I usually put out something about every other day on that channel. So, uh, hey, anyways, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. <music>